All right, here we go. We are back with another day four devotion. I was calling it day four meditation, but day four devotion just kind of seems to roll off better. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we still want to encourage you uh, who are watching, if you're going along with Core 52, and if you're watching this, I assume that you probably are, to still, this is not, this is in no way a replacement of the meditation time. Yeah, good call there. Uh, do that, because you're right. What this really is is not meditation, because we're, we're doing a lot of talking and uh discussing and going on whereas your your meditation time is where you know you're gonna you're gonna take these scriptures you're gonna get alone and you're gonna you know read them multiple times and just pray you know lord like show me like yeah and me. and there's some quiet I mean, some quiet just thinking time on those things too you know like you, you read the scripture and you think it over you think about what it means the implications of it how it it flows generally out from you and and pray over those things and you can actually take a verse read it think about it pray over it think some more and then move on to the next one and do those processes you know meditation i think is kind of you know a word that we you know take from television and we kind of have like you know this idea that is yeah just kind of you know not local and right. uh you know that that's not that i mean that is meditation but it's not exclusively what it is and this right. is a great opportunity to, uh, you know, I think for this time, maybe even hopefully through our, you know, discussion that we can give you even just a few things to think about in your meditation time. Absolutely. Because meditation is, is another one of those words like we've been talking about lately, like like a word like covenant, like it's a right. Bible word. And yet the world has use for it. And then meditation is a Bible word. And yet the, uh, the world has use for it. And holiness is a Bible word. And, but the neat thing about holiness is that other than kind of an exclamation, uh, the world really doesn't talk about things being holy. It's more of a suffix for being surprised uh, yes. or you know, <laughs> taken, taken aback, you know what I mean? But unlike the other words that we're talking about, holy, perhaps more so than anything else that we've been talking about, is is a Bible word. Yes. Yeah. And, you know as uh got ready to even preach it thinking about like how how am i going to present this and all there is to it and that's what's been so nice about taking these words like like covenant and, and holiness is really looking at them unpacking what they are and you know realizing that there's a fair bit to these words there's a fair bit of teaching that that we can go through and not just to blow past them because i think like and we've talked about this a bit already how I think that, you know, we, we use these words and like I say, sometimes we don't stop to think about what they mean, but honestly, I think sometimes we blow by them and don't, and don't know what they mean. And you're sitting there in your pew or your chair or your church and you hear a word like holy, or maybe like justification. We talked a bit about last week, some of these words, and you just sit there and you think, well, everybody else knows what this means and I don't. And so one, I'm not going to ask anyone because I don't want to be embarrassed. Um, but two, it, you know, it can be isolating. Like, am I, am I really in if I don't speak the lingo? You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. And the thing is with the word holy, almost self-fulfilling its name, it's almost in a, in a different category. Yeah, it than is. The others for that reason that it's like, you know, you can use words like devotion or justification or covenant or, you know, a lot of these what we would call churchy words. Right. They still kind of exist in their own way right. in the world. And yet holy doesn't. And then even amongst Bible words, you know, holy is the premier word, the highest word which with we describe God. Right. Uh, you know, we talked about on how Sunday, God describes himself. It's the only word. That gets ascribed to God in triplicate. Okay? God is good. But right. we never say, good, good, good is the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> God is we never say, faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lord God Almighty. Maybe, maybe we should or, start that. Maybe, maybe we should. But the Bible, on multiple occasions, mm. Old Testament, New Testament, you're talking Isaiah, you're talking Revelation, says, holy, 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 completely other, set apart is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to understand what that means. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we dive into some of these passages that are suggested in your Core 52 book and encourage you to 
uh, get your hands on a copy there. Um, here at Sherwood, we have a handful of, of copies that are going to arrive here on Tuesday. And so we'll have more if people want to get them through here. Yes, in the Bird's Corner, we've got, right now, we have two more that are available just for the grabbing. But if you need a copy of those, when those two are gone, then just reach out and uh, Ben will definitely send them. Right to your you. door. Absolutely. DoorDash with the Core 52. That's and right. so uh, today, the first verse that it gives us to look over in this vein is from the book of Exodus, right at the start of your Bible. Mm -hmm. And Exodus 19, 6 says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. And th that, uh, that distinction of Israel being God's people, right? And so it's that these are God's specific people. And so they are a holy nation. And this really embodies that uh, meaning that, that we've talked about of being set apart. That that's, this, that's is, right. this is Good. God's people set apart for himself, and therefore they are a holy nation for his specific purposes. And that's what we have to understand. And we've talked about this, uh, at least in Burst Corner some, I and mean, likely you have at Sherwood as well. Like, so as we hear the word holy, especially as it relates to, you know, God's people being holy and set apart or God being holy. And what we tend to think is that, well, well, what does holy mean? Well, holy just means like really, really good. Right. As sometimes what we think, right? Like it must mean like it's really, really like exceptionally good. And when we talk about God being holy, there are certainly connotations of that. Right. But holy, again, we want to remember is completely other, completely set apart. So the opposite of holy wouldn't be evil. No. Holy would be normal. Yeah, or regular. Or, or average. Right. Right? And Ordinary. So, exactly. And so when he, when he says that you will be a holy nation, it means that you are going to be completely different. You are going to be completely other, like set apart, like noticeably set apart. From other nations. And the interesting thing is, is the context that we have in the book of Exodus, right? Mm. Because we have it, we have it surrounding the giving of the law. Right. And this is what we need to understand within in, in the book of Exodus here when he says, okay, like you're gonna be for me a kingdom of priests, you're gonna be a, a holy nation. It's it's clouded where God is giving his people in in being set apart. There are a number of things that you will do. Right. That will make you set apart. There are a number of things that you will not do. Right. And it will make you set apart. There are, are a number of things that you will eat and not eat. And it can be really easy for us, especially in 2022, to say, you know, I don't really get that. Like, mm. why, why would... Why would God do that? And especially where, you know, obviously we're under new covenant and, and God is, has now made the umbrella. And that's what we need to understand too, as far as like, even like, this is when God is picking out a specific people within the world where now we all have the opportunity to be his people. And so if you think about it, if, if you were going to set apart a specific people, like so that they were completely different from all other people groups in the whole world, you know, how would that, how would that be done? Well, you would do that by the way that they act. You would do that by the things that they do and, and don't do. And one way that, that would even, you know, go appearance wise and tradition and custom wise would be to really make specific their diet. And so God here is is setting apart a people. That's what makes them a holy nation. Right. And, you know, it's it's interesting how I mean, oftentimes we, we talk about the Bible. We talk about how we are to operate as God's people and. You know, something that we kind of emphasize sometimes is, you know, people think the Bible is just a big book of don't, right? Mm -hmm. you don't do this and don't do that. And it's like God's like this big cosmic killjoy. Right. And and we try to, you know, say, well, look, well, the Bible is actually much more a book of do. And, you know, we did the, the thing last week. You can right. do the do's and the time for the don'ts. Yeah. But, you know, it, there is there does come a time where there is that in distinction. You know, we don't want to say, well, the whole we don't want Christians to be categorized completely by what they don't do. Mm -hmm. But that is part of not being ordinary. 
is, Absolutely. is the things that we abstain from because there are things that we are set apart from because our holiness is not like God's holiness in that right. there are things that the Christian encounters that are, you know, to use another Bible word, that are defiling. Yes. Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, that, that kind of dovetails into uh, our next scripture, which is in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, which says, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us pur purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Right. Because something what we'll do is we'll say like, well, what really matters is what you believe, right? What really matters right. is like, is your faith. And like, yeah, that's true. But as we talked about last week, how do we demonstrate what we believe? How do we demonstrate our faith? Right. And you will act out, you will act out what you believe. This is it. Right. You can say, you can, the heart, you can, the mouth speaks the, the things that we, that, that we say and do, we put on display who we are, what we think and what we believe. That's right. So, I mean, if you can declare all you want, well, like I'm a follower of God, um, but that will prove out and, and, and it'll prove out when, I guess when it matters, but it'll prove out, like there's always something to bring about. Like I could declare to you that I am not afraid of the dark. And then all of a sudden you flick the you know, lights off true. and it's dark and I shriek. Well, then I've acted out my belief. Absolutely. Right. And so I didn't know you wanted to talk about that. Well, we you know, I, I think it's, I think it's time. I think it's time. You know, we're, we're, we're making strides here. We're all growing together in this process. And Absolutely. so but you, know, you and I were talking beforehand about how darkness and light, they can't coexist. That's right. That's right. And that's, and that's coming up in a, in our third verse too. But we, we've kind of talked about coming into this verse, the, understanding the, the difference between our holiness as it's commanded and God's holiness, right? Because here it says that we are to cleanse ourselves from right. every, uh, I have every defilement. Um, what did you have there? Every contamination. Well, we're to purify ourselves. And it might, you could even say like make ourselves holy from or set apart from everything that contaminates. Right. And so it kind of goes back to this toothbrush metaphor, yes. right? You know, what's funny is as uh, I preached about this, when we preached about it on Sunday, we're talking about this toothbrush thing. I was actually thinking while I was delivering the thought, I, I should have told a story because I've had this experience where uh, fumbling with the overcrowded uh, bathroom counter, I have swatted uh, my toothbrush into the toilet. Uh, yes. At, at, a, at a certain time, which, you know, and then so that, you know, obviously is no longer set apart for its purpose. No. And then my solution to that was to uh, defile my wife's toothbrush by using it instead. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was no longer. Hopefully she's not watching this. No, 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 she doesn't watch these. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, you know, it just, it's, it's, and that's that's kind of how it goes too, right? That when we are defiled, uh, mm -hmm. or we are mm -hmm. allow ourselves to to interact with unholiness, it actually breeds yeah, more yeah. unholiness. That's yeah, that that's just a natural. Behavior. It's because and again, like that's part of why when God gives us do's and don'ts. It's not like don't do this, and don't do that, because he wants to ruin your fun, right? Like we've talked about the Bible is a manual for your life and how to live it in the most uh, like effective and joyous, but also safe way. Absolutely. And we're, so we're, what he's saying is, you know, don't be defiled or contaminated by these things because it's not just like a, a one-time thing. It's actually course setting. Absolutely. I, I, it's, it's not unique to me. I don't remember where I first heard it. I've heard it a number of times, but I always like the phrase. It says, whenever in the scripture, whenever God says don't, what we should hear is don't hurt yourself. Mm. You know, I, I often say that. that to my kids that like when dad's telling you to do something like, like, Hey, don't do that. Right. It's not because he's trying to ruin your fun. He's trying to keep you safe. Yeah. You know? And when God says don't, he's saying, do not hurt yourself. Yeah. And now I can't help but uh, jump in and confess here in that to appreciate to God's holiness in that and what a complete and loving father he is. Mm. 
because uh, if that's the same thing, I say like, you know, I'm don't do this because you're going to get hurt. That's what you tell the kids. And then what do they do? They do the thing and they get hurt. And then right. what do I do as dad? I say, told you, told you that yep. was going to happen. That's a decision yep. you made. Well, look at that. How'd that feel? Hope you remember next time. But that's not, that's not the nature of the Holy God, is it? That it really isn't. You know, it's funny. I've told this story a few times. I can remember when Kyla was, was little, little, and I was going to put her in her car seat. And she wasn't even being bad. She was just kind of like being silly. And I was like, hey, we got to be careful here. And she ended up smacking her head on the, uh, you know, on the edge of the door, getting into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And she was starting to cry. And same thing, like I had said not to, you did the thing, you got hurt. And I will admit in front of you and everybody, I have a hard time not giving the I told you so. Yeah. Um, I, I don't do it with my wife because uh, it doesn't go over as well. This doesn't go well with the kids either. But I just feel very, like it's a there. different level of unholy. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I can remember saying like, huh, like that's why dad told you. And I was just into my lecture and she said to me, dad, I just need you to wipe my tears. Ooh. And I thought, oh man. And I thought, you know, the way that that's, that's, isn't that the way God deals with us as far mm -hmm. as like, you know, we, we want, I love the phrase, we wander off into the stupid pit yeah. and you know, we've defiled ourselves and we come out, we're a mess and God doesn't go, I told you, I told you like, right. yeah, you got what you deserved didn't you? But he, you know, he wipes our tears and he sets us back in, in place. And that's, you know, that's what makes God. Yeah. You know, God and, that's, so different and that's why that reaction too of God puts us back on that path of striving, right? Because that's what this is talking about. And that's a one principal difference or maybe perhaps the principal difference of God's mm -hmm. holiness and our holiness, other than he is a, you know, complete, overwhelming, all knowing, all good being, um, is that God's holiness is complete it's beyond complete where right. ours the command for our holiness is a striving so it says yeah. uh cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit clinging or sorry bringing holiness to completion yes right? or so i think yours has something to, about striving for perfection our, no it, it says perfecting holiness perfecting holiness right out of, out of reverence for god and that's and again that has to translate into the way that we live so we see god's holiness but we have to really reflect when we understand okay this is a holy god and his holiness is different well, what is what does our holiness mean and so if we if we move forward into first peter this is one of my favorite scriptures by the way this one in first peter chapter two if you highlight or underline your bible this one should be highlighted and or underlined uh it says but you are a chosen people mm. a royal priesthood a holy or read set apart nation mm god's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light and you know you and i were talking beforehand and i, when I we were talking about this verse and here's here's the thing that always sticks out to me in, in this in this verse is is we we do tend to really like this verse so I, mean, I can i hear the song the chorus yes. that we used to sing as, as kids they're going in my head and you know, it is it is one that people, if they don't have it memorized, you're probably at least familiar with it. If you grew up in the church or if you're fairly new to church, then maybe you hear that and go, man. But we, we like almost everything about it. Love, like you are a chosen people. Yep. Love that word royal, you know, a holy nation, a set apart people, God's special possession that you've been called out of darkness into light. And the thing that we kind of breeze over in that is echoed back in Exodus 19. Because he talked about being a kingdom of what? of priests right and he says you are a chosen people a royal priesthood that we are a a nation of priests and we like chosen we like royal we like holy we like god's special possession we love you know called out of darkness and the light but what does it mean to be a nation of priests right. because because now you've got a job that's that's the thing and it's an important job mm. it's it's a, it's a holy job it's a set apart job and it's something we have to be mindful of in our own holiness because there's two things going on, okay? Because what is a priest? What did a priest do? Well, a priest represented the people's interests to God. Right. When we think about that, saying, okay, well, if I'm representing people's interests, who, whose interests am I representing to God? Is it is it my brothers and sisters in Christ? Well, if if they're also part of this nation of priests, it's, it's probably not them. Nope. Who do I represent? Oh man, I got to, I need to intercede for the world to God. 
And then I asked, like, like what, do I, what about when people wrong me? What about the people who I find annoying or that I don't like? What about the people that, that are on the wrong side of issues in my mind? Right. The people that don't vote the way that I vote or, or want, you know, the I'll same things I don't like I on Facebook at my own church or things like that, like whatever it is, right? I intercede for them right. to God. And here's the other thing. And this was what was, this is what the nation of Israel a lot of time got wrong. And it's what you and I get wrong is that if we are a nation of priests, it also means that we represent God to people. Yeah. That people in Exodus should have been able to look at the Jews and know what the true God was like. Right. And people should be able to look at you and I. Yeah, well, there's and there's a movement, right? Because like, like you, know you say, it gives it gives this long list. You know, you are, you know, a chosen people. Again, like you say, I like chosen. Uh, I, the royalty, got to like that, right? Mm -hmm. All of these things, like... I'm God's possession and, and all these things. And then when it gets into that priesthood, it's like, okay, well now, now like it's, all, we love all the things we can be, mm -hmm. but now it's something I have to do. Mm -hmm. And, and there's movement. And he, and he even says as it, as it ends, you know, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, as we would sing. Mm -hmm. That's right? right. And so, there's movement. Yes. Right. So this is this is where you were, and you're you're moving. And he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But we are continually moving. Right. Yep. So it's darkness behind me. God is before me. But we don't reach God this side of heaven. And so you know, even even as we talked in the last verse about bringing holiness to completion or perfecting holiness, this is a, another church word of sanctification. This is the living out. This is the striving yes. for it. This is where you actually live your faith and, again, act out what you believe. But you were called out of darkness. And you, as you mentioned earlier, darkness and light, it's, it's kind of an understatement to say they're incompatible because light wipes out darkness. That's right. Like it literally, they literally cannot coexist. Mm -hmm. There's no room for it. There's, you know, I've got a little light here in front of me and it's off on. And when it's on, it's not like, oh, well, let's bring in more darkness to get rid of it. You can't. No, that's right. I, I said before we started, like, oh, I have a very dark colored shirt on. And yet the only way you can see the darkness in the shirt is by the light. Right. Right. Like it's, that's the only way. That's the only way that it's there. Now, one and thing look, do, I've got I've got tons of dark whiskers, but the only ones anybody ever points out are the white ones. Uh, that's that, that is true. <laughs> and, and you know the thing is too, and this is this is an important point because this is what I want us. I wouldn't want anybody to leave this today. And we talked about this on Sunday in Bird's Corner. I wouldn't want anybody to shut this off today and think like, oh man, I just need to I need to be better. I need to right. I would say do gooder, right? <laughs> like I just need to to, to be yeah. gooder. And because this is the thing about sanctification. And really even about holiness as, as they hold hands mm. is sanctification is the second part of the double cure right we talk a lot about salvation which is what seals us for heaven and the second act of grace is sanctification and sometimes what we think is like well we understand there's nothing i can do to save myself and it's god's act that saves me and that's true it's, it's the work of jesus on the cross that saves me and that is that is 100 percent true and then when we, when we get to the work of sanctification we think okay well now i have to do more and more be better and better do gooder and gooder right you can do no more to sanctify yourself than you can save yourself right it is the act of grace in yielding to the spirit okay yeah. and actually things like this like taking time and getting alone with god yielding to the holy spirit so that 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 that's your instinct is to go with where the spirit is leading you. Right. And, and again, understand like we talked about on Sunday too, is your holiness, your holiness flows through you, but it's right. God's holiness, right? It flows right. from God through you and very much like the identity that we talked about. And it says this in the chapter, if you have the book as well, that your holiness is received, not achieved. That's right. Right. And that's you don't make yourself holy. You can't because right. even though it inspires the behaviors that we engage in, your behavior is not what purifies you. It just isn't. That's right. That's right. So lots of stuff there. It's a, 
it's a big subject. I do hope that if you, if you maybe, if you haven't taken your meditation time yet today, that that maybe you'll consider these things as we uh, as we've talked about today. Uh, and again, you know, that's that's the thing we want to understand is that this this set apartness, God's holiness is different than our holiness, and yet it is His work and it's our yielding. That's right. So, Dan, maybe you could just pray pray us out through this. Absolutely, it'd be it'd be my joy. All right. All right, let's pray together. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, even as we've talked here today, we are reminded that that you are holy, that there is no one like our God, that there's there's just no one like you. Your, your goodness and your grace, your faithfulness, Lord, all, all glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. And yet, even though you are so, uh, so much higher above us, Lord, that your ways and your thoughts are, are so much higher than our ways and thoughts, you, you are mindful of us. You command your love toward us, that even while we were yet sinners, while we were the, the enemies of God, that you rescued us. And Lord, as we think about the progress that we make, that we're not, that we're not there yet, that we're still growing, Reminded, Lord, that you who began a good work in us will carry on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And we do give you thanks for that. I do pray, Lord, that you would make us that chosen generation, that royal priesthood, holy nation, Lord. That we would live as a people who have been called out of darkness into your glorious light. That we would reflect your light. We wouldn't be mining for something of our own, trying to put on a display of our own goodness, our, our own efforts, Lord, but that we would yield to you in the same way that the moon reflects the sun, that we, in the way that we live, in the way that we talk, in the way that we serve, Lord, that we would reflect your son. Lord, I'm grateful uh, for each one who's watching today, Lord, or whatever they may be. I'm grateful uh, for... Uh, my brother, who I can talk with here, Lord, I'm grateful for these two churches and and uh, for your people all over the world that are maybe doing stuff just like this, Lord. And I just pray that uh, because of the way that we live, others would know that you live hmm. and maybe get a little glimpse of what you're like. And we give you thanks, praise, and all the glory, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Dan, and thank you to everybody who has tuned in and we will see you next time.